This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Awesome. So welcome everyone to the meeting and I'm going to, um, my name is Sarah and I am, oh my gosh, which plot am I? I am going to pull up the map and everyone, you can pull up the map as well. Cause I'm going to, uh, everyone will introduce themselves with their name. I think you're C5. Oh, thank you. Or is that no, right? C5. No, I'm C5. C3. <laughs> C3. Uh, oh, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm thinking a quadrant, like there's four things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, everyone will go around, say your name and your plot number and how long you've been at the garden. Um, and I don't know if you want something fun, you're going to grow this year. Um, I'm not growing anything new and fun, just the same. <laughs> um, great. So I'm just going to work down the list I have here. and. Um, Oh, and I've been at the garden for, I think, seven years now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let's see. I have a phone number that ends, starts with 413 and ends in 02, um, if that person would like to go next. I think that's me. Yeah, it is. All right. This is Deirdre Quirk and Leah Strode. Uh, do you remember what garden plot we are? No. No, nope, me neither. And we're not in a place where we can check it. But hi, everyone. I think you're B you're right above me, right? So I think maybe B3. Yes. That sounds right. Maybe cool. four? B4. <laughs> B4. Mark's got it, actually. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, and we're excited to try growing melons again this year. Hey. All right, thank you guys. And then next I have another um, phone number. It's 413 and then um, ends in 64. Hi, this is Christine and Liam. Um, Colin and Rachel are in class and we'll join later. Awesome. And oh, I have no idea what, I have no idea what our plots are, I'm sorry. You're C you're C four because you're next to me. I do know that. Okay, and then Liam, I guess, is D four. Yep. And then Colin, maybe C eleven, and Rachel D eleven. Awesome. I'm just guessing. All right. Oh yeah, and then how long have you been at the garden? Since the beginning. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is okay, Eric. Um, All right. Next is Eric. Hi, everybody. I'm Kyoto. I'm in, uh, Eric, your uh, mic is very quiet, just so you know. I can't hear you very well. Oh, oh yeah. Hold on. It's muffled. Yeah, it's, it just it sounds like there's a sock over it. <laughs> it's actually hearing me through a pair of headphones that across the window. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Eric. We'll come back. All right. Um, Frank? Hi, I'm Frank Johnson. I am in C8, and I have been gardening since the beginning. I'm the last original member of the committee, so... The old dude. But I, I'm not sure what new thing I'm going to grow. I don't, I don't have a new bean, which is kind of unusual for me. I'll probably find something weird, though. Um, I did see artichoke plants up at the co-op, so I thought about that because never done that. Um, and I, I, uh, I do operations, so there's machines. Mark and I do that together. So the, the, the lawnmower and string, I really want to hand off to someone else. Um, and then weed inspections. And, and I would set, tell you now, just start weeding now. I, I need to get up and weed. Um, it, just do it. And anything you can do to prevent it, even better. During the opening day, if anybody wants any tips, we can give some. Um, 
Okay, that's it. So Frank, if you don't, if Frank doesn't have a new bean this year, does that make you a has bean? Just for that, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna find new, I'm finding a new freaking bean just because you said that. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, great. Next we have Jane Jacob. Jacob Bus. Jacobus. Jacobus. Nice. Okay, great. Hi. Um, I am in plot A5. And um, I'm new to the garden, to the community garden. So hello, looking forward to meeting everybody. Um, Welcome. I, um, you know, the plot that I'm at is, um, is like totally overgrown and it's pretty much solid, dense grass. So I have a lot of work to do. <clears throat> I've already started. And um, I guess the most interesting thing I'm going to grow this year is okra. But I'm going to just do other kinds of veggies and flowers, cutting flowers. Awesome. Cool. Well, welcome, Jane. Thank you. Um, and next, we've got Jessica Johnson. Hi, I'm Jesse. Um, this is Oscar. Hello. <laughs> We're also new. Um, we're in D12, the corner, and I'm excited about growing snap peas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What and are you excited about? Tomatoes. <laughs> Whatever seedlings we have that actually started. <laughs> yeah. So nice to meet everyone. Welcome, welcome. It's so cool you started some seeds that rocks. All right. Next we have... Jonathan Adams, who goes by John, but I always say Jonathan because that's what it says. Hello. Hello. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Two microphones. I moved it so I don't know. Caitlin and I, this is our second year. I'm not sure what plot we're in. Mm. Um. We've got lots of exciting things. Uh, spinach among them. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Are you guys doing potatoes again? All right. All right. Uh, next, we Julie Fetterman. Hi, I'm new, and I am in a seven. Um, and uh, the exciting thing that I'm going to grow this year, I hope, is um, Hopi sunflower seeds that you can make a dye from. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to grow four different kinds of sunflower seeds at our house last year. We moved um, after that, and the birds ate them all. So I am going to see what I can do to protect them. Oh, that rocks. I grow those too, Julie. And I, the birds eat the seeds pretty fast. So we'll collaborate on how to help ourselves with that. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. And next, Caitlin Buzain. Is that, is that of um, Caitlin and John? Is that Caitlin's last name? Yeah, that's Caitlin's last name. She's here. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, John's <laughs> tablet wouldn't work, so I tried to use my phone, and then seemingly our Wi-Fi can't handle both of us trying to get onto this meeting. But with John, I think we're in B5, which I think is the same one we had last year. But right. All right. Whoever... <laughs> Was right here for me. You grew some beautiful onions, so expect me to be bothering you come Saturday because I am all about the onions this year. <laughs> maybe Ted, maybe Mark. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, and Caitlin and John are some of the most enthusiastic uh, garden members uh, who aren't on the committee, <laughs> I would say. They're up there with, so yeah. <laughs> Um, and not, there's a lot of enthusiastic people. I've just, they come to everything. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so we just said Julie and, uh, so Margie, you're next. 
Okay. Um, I was just going to go get something. I am Margie. I'm the one who bothers you all the time with emails. I am in D5. I've been here, I don't know, maybe four years. I, I, I have lost track of time. And I also don't know exactly when I'm going to grow yet. <clears throat> I just left two plots at the Northampton Garden, so I'm kind of more condensed than I have been previously. So I'm still working it out. I know, I know that my son has a plot and we're going to grow mostly butternut squash in his plot, but I haven't decided on my plot yet. I noticed that you cleaned up a bunch of your wild strawberries. You, you covered all oh, man, I yeah. dug them out like mad last fall. I was just digging and digging and digging. And now when I see one where I don't want it, out it comes. I'm done asking people if they want it because nobody wants them. Yeah, the strawberries were like overflowing into everybody's plot. And that was before me because I didn't plant them. I only have a few strawberries left at the garden. So this is, I guess it makes sense. It's a mixed bag of emotions with the strawberries. Um, next is Mark. Good evening, everyone. Oops, I got, okay, I'm on, mic's working. I got booted off once, so you love Google Meet. Anyway, uh, Mark Leonis, C5. I've been a gardener since 2019 when we moved to town. And I'm thinking this year, I'm going <clears> to <throat> give potatoes a try again. I've grown them in other places in the past. And actually, in the donation garden a couple of years ago, we tried potatoes, and they, 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 they did pretty well. I mean, they didn't do bad. So I'm going to try that. Awesome. And Mark, you run um, uh, uh, operations Yeah, with Frank. Um, stuff, stuff in the shed along with Frank. And uh, yeah and the compost uh, stuff I've been doing too. Fabulous, thanks, Mark. But uh, Next is Melissa Labar. Hi, I'm Melissa Labar Rogers and I'm new, I'm in 10B. Um, and I grow some things at home already, but I this year I'm kind of going crazy with all different heirloom tomatoes, like 16 different ones, and um, a lot of other things. Zinnias are a big favorite thing of mine to grow, too, so I'll be doing that as well. I'm definitely going to be trying to figure out how to work with clay soil for the first time. It's very different than I've grown in before so i'm curious how um to amend it so that i can grow carrots too without them being kind of stumpy and but um i'm excited awesome well welcome welcome and your tomatoes will do great we have a lot of people who do some great tomato growing so definitely yeah ask for help and advice and stuff. Thank you. All right, next, Maui. Oh, okay, hi. <laughs> um, so I'm in B9. This is my fourth, I think my fourth season. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling a little disheartened about my plot, but um, but I'm going to be growing dahlias again, which are one of my favorites. And I'm really excited because um, the garlic I planted in the fall seems to be doing okay. <laughs> so hopefully it will remain okay. I have a great feeling about it, Maui, so it's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right. And next we have Nora. Uh, hi, I'm Nora, I'm Nora Doubleday. I'm in C12 for my second year. Uh, and this year I'm hoping to grow pumpkins. I love it. Cool. Uh, Nora's also an incredibly dedicated new gardener. No longer new, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, great. And then Norman. 
You're muted, Norman. It should there, just be on that? the bottom left. There he is. There he is. <laughs> there he is with his actual name this time rather than unknown. <laughs> oh my God, the mysteries and solved. So I'm in B8. Uh, and uh, this is my second year. And I'm psyched about growing anything that grows. Last year had great success with uh, dark romaine lettuce. And I'm going to try to learn how to grow tomatoes like Ted. I'm looking forward to the year. <clears throat> yeah, maybe Ted is our tomato expert. We'll have to get to see. He's a girl. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And next we have um, Pedro. And I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. What is what is your name? I'm totally blanking. Emily. Emily. Right. Yeah. Um, well, hi. We're Pedro and Emily, first time, first year gardeners. And we are in D7. Um, and I'm excited to grow anything also that grows, but I'm particularly excited. I want an herb garden. Um, I'm taking an herbalism course. So I'd like to apply some of those things uh, that I'm learning there in the community garden. Yeah. Oh. That rocks. You'll probably be able to teach us some stuff. That's awesome. Let's see. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. And then um, practically prepared, I is <laughs> here. All right. Hi, it's Catherine. So uh, Bruce and I are in A12, and this is our third year. So I'm so excited because a friend sent me seeds for Oregon Sweet Meat Homestead Squash, which is my favorite squash of all time. And I'm actually growing some at the community garden, but I want to save seeds. So I'm also growing some at my son's because I don't have to worry about crossing and so that'll be cool. And we're doing an experiment because we are old people and, you know, knees and backs. So I have accumulated a ton of, um, you know, raised beds and we will be working. I'm, we're creating as much soil. We're still going to have to buy soil. But um, I just did a workshop at the library on growing potatoes in containers. And I'm hoping for a successful container potato year and we'll see what else we can grow. I'm doing um, carrots and potatoes. Actually, I think pretty much everything will be in containers. So we'll see how successful this is. But we just we hope it'll be easier on us physically if we're not, you know, way down at ground level so much. Thanks, Catherine. That's awesome. And can um, just throw out, I'm also organizing the seed library at the at Emily Williston Library. So it's better than it was. It is not perfect. I've, you know, thrown out things like 20 year old onion seeds um, and I'm, I'm, things are better organized. So I won't say the selection is great, but it's there. And if you want to, you know, look there for seeds, please do so. Um, that reminds me, I just heard my friend works for a solar company that's paired with Fedco seeds and they just donated a ton of seeds to the seed library um, somewhere else in the valley. But I oh. wanted to email you and put you guys in contact. So um, oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Love right, me so some Fedco good seeds. reminder. Thank you. Okay. So in Saturday also happens to be the townwide cleanup. And Bruce and I are scheduled to work Saturday morning on Main Street. So we'll try to get up to the garden tomorrow and get started. But we'll be there. Just it'll be it will be when we're done with our stent cleaning up leaves on the sidewalk. Fabulous. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. All right. And then next we have 
Uh, Stephen. I don't know if Stephen walked away for a second, maybe. Here I am. Well, oh, they Here I am. Sorry about that. Um, no, I, I I put the video off for a second because I was munching away at what's going to be my secret crop this year: <clears throat> French fries. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want, I didn't want to reveal. That. Actually, I've been in B eleven. And I believe this is my, by my count, my ninth season. Um, I have uh, uh, want to make sure everyone knows because I have indicated that uh, this year I'm happy to uh, donate my um, uh, plot uh, if, if anyone's interested. I might just cover it over if no one is and just have it be, be fallow this year. Um, didn't, didn't somebody take B11? If someone took B11, great. It's all set to go. I think so. Excellent. Sarah, do you remember? I did think we had somebody. I, I, I'm wondering if it's um, someone who hasn't been able to meet with me yet, because that there was a person who's been a little MIA. So I'm gonna. I'll check the. <laughs> um, I'll maybe, write a note and we'll yeah, email there's about a name, it. There's a name. There's a name on the map. So. What is the name on the map? Uh, Julian Van yeah. Lichkin. Yes, that's who yeah, I haven't heard from. Uh, Julia okay. Van Lichkin. Right. You haven't heard from her? No. I'll no. email her. Okay. Okay, great. That's terrific. But we have two other open plots. We have, um, well, I don't know. Are we finished introducing? I don't want to no, jump No, we have ahead. one more person no, we've read, and then we have to ten. go to Eric. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. All right. Um, so cliffhanger on what plots are available. You'll have to stay tuned. All right, Ted. Hi, Ted Stock. This is season three. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I am in B8, south, side, south half. Norman is in the north half. And Norman tomatoes last year were the best I've ever grown, and I don't know why they came out so so well. Uh, it was just luck. <laughs> uh, my big thing this year is uh, I'm going to be trying to grow in grow bags, five gallon, ten gallon, and twenty gallon grow bags. S some of the same things I've grown before, but just in smaller grow bags. That's and I'm looking forward to it. Do a little experimenting. Fabulous. That is exciting. And you're keeping your secrets about the tomatoes locked away. So that's good. Um, <laughs> then, um, Eric, okay. let's go back um, to you. All right. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. All right. Um, my name is Eric Sioka. I'm in plot 6D. Um, this is my third and probably final year of growing in grow bags. Um, reconditioning the soil, it had sunken down considerably. And so I needed to retreat it and build it up. And I don't know, next year it might be ready. Um, so I'm, interesting, I'm interested to see all the grow bag experiments that everybody else is doing and see what, what we can get done in that. Uh, <laughs> this year, my exciting thing to plant is something that's not hot peppers. Uh, because normally I invest a lot of real real estate in that, and uh, I have way too many, and I have nothing left to do with them. I have so many, so much frozen hot sauce and uh, tinctures and everything that I could possibly make with hot peppers that I'm not going to bother this year. So I'm um, going to see what's going to go in space of that. Um. I will say maybe you can help get some give some advice to I think it was Maui was struggling with their soil and then we had um, Jane to um, Eric you might have some soil amending advice here as well um, and then John um, raise your hand. I just wanted to throw to Eric. If you need help getting rid of that frozen <laughs> hot sauce, I'm definitely available to help you with that. If we can arrange a, arrange for an exchange, I'll bring you some. You could bring some to the workday and we could all just 
do some tastings or something. Uh, you I'll know? bring the chips. No water. <laughs> Just unfortunately awesome. not this work day. I'm in Colorado right now. So. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> the water is turned on, Sarah. Did you know? It, it, yes, I was weirdly there when they did it. It was crazy. Oh, okay. It made me feel like I'd done it on purpose. I couldn't just like hold up at the exact you were moment. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I washed my hands when I was there. It was crazy. It was awesome. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, welcome everybody. This is such a good turnout. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us started. Well, anybody have any public comment or anything they want to offer up up front before we get started on the agenda more thoroughly? Sarah, do you have the jumping worms on the agenda? Oh, yeah. Let me add that to the new business. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Margie. I had a um, question. Yeah. I had a quick question for Mark. Um, I know I was late getting my money to you. Can I get compost or is it too late? Tell me your name again. Did you already send me an Kathy email? Kathy Harrison, I sent you a check. You did, and I got yeah. an email back saying that it looked like it was too late. Uh, no, I, actually, I think I may have qualified it. I think it, I said it's it passed the date. However, depending upon, we, we have some extra compost that ordinarily we would dedicate to the uh, donation garden and the pollinator garden. Mm -hmm. And it, it depends on how much they need. If they don't need too much, then yeah, we might be able to help you. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, I'll we'll keep you posted. I also have a, sorry, I also have a compost question. Um, we emailed and sent in a check, but never heard anything. And I'm just wondering if that, if we can expect you, you, compost or no. Uh, did you say you sent me a check? Yes, we did. Okay, and what is your name? Your, your court. Yeah, I got yours. Yeah, awesome. it's Thanks. Been, been received. You're all set. Thank you. You bet. Awesome. Great. Um, I'm super excited for Compost Saturday. Um, and I will just really quick the minutes from last month, if people have looked them over, um, would anyone like to move to accept the minutes? So moved. All right. Anyone second the motion? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Great. All right. So next is the treasurer report. Okay. Um, Sarah, you wanted to go over the March treasurer's report? Because I didn't send it out on last okay. month on accident so we just need to accept it yes i think siri's turning herself on here okay i uh, <laughs> wondered i was like what <laughs> um uh does anybody have any questions on on that march report since we uh did go over it basically uh we're we're starting off the year fairly well um and um, oh, shit. no real expenditures in March. And we did take in some revenue from the fees. Yay. So that, that was March. Um, I don't know if you want to do, accept the financial report yes. separately then. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just do March and then. Um, and then we'll accept we need to do April as well, right? Yep. Okay. So um is any yep. all motion um to accept um the March uh we're not calling it the purchase order. Like what is it's the uh state of statement of my goodness financial position. Financial position. Um yep. does anyone second? I'll second. All right, all in favor? Hi. 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 Wonderful. Okay, great. Okay, with with April, uh, we had some more revenue. Um, if you look up the top, the reserve fund, which is where our funds are usually donated um, or 
the fees are, are placed in that fund. Um, <clears throat> we uh, had $100 in revenue. The $150 expense was really a transfer to the uh, Fleury's Outdoor Power Equipment because I received uh, invoices from Frank that all of our equipment was redone uh, and we did not have enough money in, the, in that uh, purchase order account. So I had to add $150 just to make sure we had enough. And uh, our, our costs uh, for the uh, <clears throat> working on the equipment was uh, $378.67. And um, that's pending. So since it's not completed, I haven't gotten a, the final completion of, of payment back from the city. I don't put it in the report as actually happening, but we it's it's in it's pending. Um, and we had uh, Ted, what was that value again that you just said? Uh, it's how much the, excuse me, what do you want to know? Oh, the dollar amount. Uh, it's it's over to the right in the pending expense. It's three hundred and seventy eight dollars and sixty seven cents. And there were three invoices, I guess, for the trimmers and the and the uh, mower. And I guess we really didn't get to it last year, so it's it's a it was a, a major like major overhaul to, to get us going for the year. I'll talk about it later. And then uh, I did have uh, some some petty cash expenditure. Uh, Frank bought some some flags, I guess, when we were laying out our um, our garden our garden plots when when the surveyor came, and we put out uh, a lot of those little orange and white flags that you see. So that was reimbursed there. Um, anybody have any questions about April? But we're looking to be in good, we're in good shape. <laughs> Ted, is that the report that was sent out by Sarah on May 1st? Because it, what you're <clears throat> describing reads differently than what I got on May 1st. Are you looking at April or March? Because the both are in there. Yeah, says, Mark, there were two, says, Mark. It's in the upper left-hand corner, April. It, okay, uh, let's see what I got here. ECG statement of, um, of position, April. Mm, having troubles with this. Okay, yeah, the, I'll take your word. Top for, left, Mark. It was I, March I don't, I, I, I don't have a top left here. <laughs> You mean on the screen here, or what, or on the uh, email? Um, on the well, if you'd opened up the attachment where it says, yeah, yeah it says uh, city ECG account. You see that that it's in big bold. In I'm looking at one that was was sent out at eleven forty five today. Yeah, the email I sent had three attachments. Yeah, there's one three attachments. Oh, okay. So, okay, there's the first one it says was as of March 31st. So that was for the month yeah. of March. Yeah. Okay. And you wouldn't there's have an April report yet because, or you do, you do have an April report. Okay. Yeah, April 30th. Okay. Okay, I got it. I see it now. Yep, I was only reading the first one. <laughs> Fabulous. No, I, 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 when I printed them out, I'm like, damn, I printed the same thing out twice. And then I finally started looking at the numbers. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not losing them. Oh. So, it's just so that Ted, Sarah Ted, said I, that it, the more go ahead, Mark. gone out last, last time for some reason. And the, uh, so she wanted to make sure everybody had a copy of March. Uh, normally you just get one, so it shouldn't be too confusing. So Ted, how are we doing? Are we keeping ahead of our projected expenses in terms of revenues? 
Well, uh, we haven't really finalized our projected expenses. I did put there, you did get something when we get to talking about budget where you can look okay. at it. And basically what I've tried to do is create a budget where we are uh, spending what, what we've taken in in our fees and donations. That's uh, the best. And see if we can make that go. Right. Well, so okay. let's approve of April and then we'll move on to talking about the budget, okay? Okay. Does anyone motion then to approve um, the April financial position? I motion yeah. we approve the April right. position. Second. Second. <clears throat> Fabulous. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Aye. Okay, cool. So now we talk about the budget a little bit. I'm one thing I'm realizing is we might not this year because we're new at doing the budget. I don't know if we'll so much finalize it as just keep using these guidelines that you've made, Ted. I, but maybe as we get closer to some more critical moments of spending, maybe have to like have harder yeses or nos. Um, well, I've I've just tried to establish one that the. Uh, that uses only what we've been able to take in. Uh, and, uh, but I would leave it open if, if anybody thinks that we need to move some money in terms of how we think we want to spend it. Uh, otherwise, I've, I've just put in what I thought we need to spend for uh, the remaining raised beds in the pollinator garden. Um, uh, put in $150 to help cover the cost of, uh, um, well, I, I think we'll, we'll have enough money that we, it won't cost us anything for the re, the excess, um, Mark, the, the excess compost. Correct. Yeah. We, we have enough revenues that everybody yeah. will get their share. Plus <laughs> we'll, we'll hopefully, hopefully, but that depends on how much is allocated for the, for the donation of the pollinator that should be discussed. Yeah. And, but to maybe put some money in there for, um, keep moss or whatever that probably should be included with compost. And the uh, moss is, um, for the grow bags for the grow bags in the uh, donation garden. Oh shit. You cut me out again. Um, it's it's best there, Eric, not to just put regular dirt in, correct? Did um did do we know for sure how much of the soil <laughs> allotted soil um compost and soil monies are going towards uh the pollinator garden right now? Did Karen get us a hard number on that? No. Okay. No, I I'm just putting down a total amount and it would have to be spread. You know, however we want to spend it, or if if you think we need to uh, <laughs> cut back on something else and add money in there, that's fine. Well, I'm uh, wondering if maybe specifically for the soil budget, um, hopefully sometimes Karen's just a little late, so maybe she'll come in here. Um, but maybe I'll reach out to her to get us her for sure numbers for the soil she's going to need. And then based on what we have left and uh, based on interest in how, and people taking care of grow bags, we can finalize um, how much budget we have to fill those. Um, my thought um, is that after this meeting, I'm gonna explain it more when we get to the um, donation garden part of the agenda, but I, um, my thought is I'll send an email after this to get people to sign up for it. Um, and I'll explain. Okay. Well, the, there are the main things in, in the budget that we, we definitely have expenses with the irrigation services. They turn the water on, they turn the water off. Uh, we have to pay for that and we have to pay to have our equipment properly, uh, taken care of. Um, and so based on this budget, the equipment maintenance, you've already used the amount that we used last year in the budget. The equipment maintenance, we, I, I put in, I adjusted the budget to 
to put in what um, what we have spent <laughs> to, to cover that. But so maybe the, that one is going to cost a little bit more than last year, basically. Well, last year we didn't have oh, a lot oh. of expense on yes. the equipment I maintenance. See. I see. I do. I guess I'll say I think that getting the tools sharpened is going to be another um, large portion. Um, I'm going to call Obashan tomorrow to get the hard numbers on that. Okay. Can you, Sarah, what did you just say? I'm going to get the tools sharpened. I've had them and been trying to get over there. I keep going the wrong day, um, but, but I have a bunch of our clippers and um, other sharp objects that, uh, from the shed to sharpen. And they sharpen, uh, there's a guy who sharpens things um, at the hardware store. Awesome. Well, okay, any other well, comments? Yeah. Yeah. Go if, ahead, Ted. If, it, if it's all right with you, we'll just go with this yeah. as yeah. a, a good estimate of where we think we want to go and we can see how it goes. And uh, since we hadn't done this before. Yeah. And I think my one thing we'll just need to check in next meeting is if it looks like, you know, it is, yeah, equipment might be taking up more budget than we realize. So we'll just figure out what to do um, there. Yeah, well, I, I think it was, uh, you know, for, for better or for worse, it, uh, I, I think it was better uh, with our slight fee increase and asking people if they, if they wanted to or could to uh, add on a, an extra amount for a donation. Uh, because it increased our revenue, which and if we're trying to go with a uh, with a budget of just spending basically what a revenue is, uh, that uh, pay as you go. That's a good idea. Yeah, thank you for putting in all this work, Ted. It's like incredibly helpful. Um, you're the best. So great. Um, anything else uh, for finances? Hey, right operations. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we've been talking a lot about equipment. So I got the mowers and the trimmers up there, uh, and that got all taken care of. The the tr trimmers were more expensive than the mowers, uh, but it we hadn't had them serviced last year, so that may be part of the the issue. Um, and. I probably will get up there and do an initial mow this weekend. It's probably not going to be the day of the cleanup or the opening, but maybe Sunday, although we may have some rain. But the grass is already growing. Um, and then I, I do, I, I didn't get, uh, Karen emailed me and I didn't get back to her. Ted, have you gone up there at all? Did she get back to you about putting any of the bamboo in um i've i've gotten i I've, I've been up there uh on some brief visits i have gotten some three quarter inch pvc yep that that i put in okay I put, some, I put some more in today um and we're we're making progress on that i left some of the two foot sections of pvc for the for the individual sakes um and there is an eight foot section which i used uh to adjust b12 i guess of which needed when when we did the survey we we had an eight uh, a seven foot main corridor and we said it should be eight. Oh right 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 Okay. So I made those adjustments today in, in the corners of D12. Uh, so yeah, the corners of D12. D12, where they yeah. have wonderful raised beds. Um, and I, I made the adjustment in B12 and A12. And I made the adjustment in, uh, let's see, I guess it's B1. Yeah, okay. I had to move, move adjusted a foot. 
Yeah, I've been. Oh, go ahead, Frank. Sorry. No, I, I say I, I haven't been near there. I've been just completely out of my mind, busy. So, um, so what were you gonna say, Sarah? Oh, I wondered if on Saturday, if people have any questions with some of the plots that got, you know, some like the the twelves. It sounds like that that row. Um, you know, definitely grab one of us and we'll go look at where everything is and answer questions. Saturday will be a great day to look at where you're the new where the markings are and understand what your plot looks like. Um, and I can include that in the email too. Um, yeah, because once you get to my plot, C8, uh, from there on up, then things got adjusted. Everything else before that was pretty close to what it yeah. ought to be. Yeah, it's just once you got past my plot, um, then it's, or at my plot is where it started to then we were off by what ted what would you say about six eight inches something like that maybe a yeah four. it was it was it was crazy so it's like c c12 and d12 have a have about a foot of grass yeah um, no they there it, it needs everything needs to move so and that's just you know for, for everybody who's new or relatively new we haven't remeasured these plots since the garden was founded so with everybody who's come and gone over the years, uh, just borders have, have kind of accordioned at times. And I would encourage you if you're new, if you're gonna build raised beds, don't build them right at the edge of your plot. Give yourself a buffer. Um, and uh, so that I, I think it's just good for you in the future for if you leave for whoever takes a plot over in the future. Uh, because there's a couple of beds that are a little over where they ought to be. And that's not the person's fault. That's just what we, that was the border when they got the plot. Yeah. Basically the markings that I've, uh, that I've, I've put down are um, on the CD side of the main corridor. And they're at the 40, the, the, the big plots, the 40 by 40s with three foot for for the path and so those those are all in on the cd side on the a b side i don't have all those things in we still need to put more in on that side um i did get a string down um, that runs the full length of the corridor that's eight feet up uh, so we we need to put more stakes in to okay. uh, to measure off the forty and threes. Do you think that could be a project for Saturday? Um, if we don't have any uh, big ones. If if somebody else uh, can do it, I unfortunately I cannot be here this weekend. Um, okay. But uh, you know we could probably you know we could probably get done by by next week sometime but uh, okay, cool. i think i think we're in good shape and uh and putting the markings in all the the four main corners of the garden are marked yeah because that that's something i could help with next week i'm just flat out at the at the community yeah. college right now it's it's <laughs> i'm on search committees reading essays yeah no it's not a it's it's a confluence of craziness um let's see what else here though uh so yeah if there are any flags left and you have a, you're up there at the plots don't move anything because uh we we worked with the surveyor and it's it's pretty solid right now i did uh, not, I, don't, I did not remove any flags even though yeah, i good put the stakes in yeah the, so in, everybody all our gardeners don't don't do anything with the flags because no <laughs> That was an interesting experience. Well, thank awesome. you guys so much for doing it. It's so cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark raised uh, raised a hand. Um, if if I get keep getting booted off, uh, 
I haven't left. I'm just, this Google Meet doesn't work well for me and my computer for whatever reason. But anyway, just to report back on the hoses and nozzles, it seemed like we probably have enough based on purchases we made last year. However, and this is for, especially for new gardeners, if you find yourself not having a hose uh, reasonable proximity to your plot, uh, let me know, or Frank or one of us know, and we will, we will address that. Same thing with nozzles. Uh, if there's any other tool needs too, uh, we put that out earlier, and I think somebody said we needed some uh, um, something to help for the cover your ears while you're doing lawn mowing. So uh, we can look into that as well. But if you have other ideas, let us know other things that you need. And Mark, I may have I may have that covered, Mark. To tell you the truth, so excellent, excellent. Yeah. What's the update on the wheelbarrow? Is that the new wheelbarrow? Yeah. Where did it come from? Who's our? Or it's not. I don't know. It, did we order one? Or there was talk of getting one? No, Is Ted it? brought that. Oh, okay, Here's great. Ted's Ted's That's so great, Ted. Thank <laughs> what you. is that? Gosh. I know, it's Ted. Where's so your beard? Man? You need a big beard. white beard. I love that wheelbarrow. It's nice. <laughs> it's, oh my god. Especially for Margie. Thank you. <laughs> But I still got to use buckets. <laughs> <laughs> we'll your, call it your Dooley. Into your wheelbarrow. It'll oh be nicknamed God. Dooley. Amazing. Uh, okay. I, yeah, we'll go ahead. probably Frank. get to this later. There's just, you know, we want to definitely talk about some things we want to do on the opening day. So I've got a couple of things listed. So. Okay, great. And I make sure. So I'll, um, okay. yeah, there's, I, there's a couple things that we'll want to take care of. Mark, that they, they say what, they're delivering the compost Saturday, correct? That's right. I, I need to pin him down for a time, but it's usually early in the morning, like nine o'clock. Well, it hasn't, I'll be there. It hasn't really rained hard in two weeks, so it might actually be a nice. The guy won't get stuck. <laughs> yeah, right. We've had two, two, two occasions, two years in a row, I think, where we, the, but the guy who was delivering his truck got stuck and we had to get help from a neighboring farmer. It's nice to have neighbors with tractors. Sure is. <laughs> <clears throat> Your buddy Russell. <laughs> yeah, Russell, man. He comes through. Uh, I'm just looking at my notes. I think I've got pretty much everything because there's not a whole lot going on yet. Uh, anybody have any questions? I, I just, I, I have to reiterate, start weeding now. Can't, can't stress it enough. Any kind of weed mitigation you can do, do it. And you want to give me your, your two cent description that you told me years ago, which is put down cardboard and, and then bark. Yeah, in cardboard, I use newspaper as well. I mean, newspaper is mo all soy ink, mostly soy ink now, so it's fine. Um, and I put it down, I put down in my corridors, especially I'll use either cardboard or, or newspaper and then, uh, wood chips. And we have a lot of wood chips and we keep getting delivered as they go down. So, um, uh, if you, I'm, I'm telling you an ounce of prevention right now will make a huge difference in July when it's hot and the weeds are just going crazy. And there, are, every year there are weeds I've never seen before in my life. And it seems like that way every year. Some of them have very um, nice flowers, but remember flowers make seeds. So just anything you can do ahead of time to, to, to create your corridors is just think about it here in the winter. The, that first shoveling, you got to set your borders if it's going to be a hard winter because the snow is going to keep contracting in on you. And just think about that with weeds. Just really try to get on top of it early. Because if you go on vacation and you leave and you come back in two weeks and you haven't dealt with it, you'll you'll have your own little forest to deal with when you get back. We have a couple um, questions. Um, Jane, did you? Yes, um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, sure, yeah. I am definitely going to need a rototiller. Um, does anybody know how much the rototiller guy charges 
Um, uh, I don't know what he's charging now. Um, I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm afraid to even guess. I would, it's gonna be probably a minimum of thirty. Because you got Jane. You. You're. Yeah. You're in a five. Yeah. It's there's a lot of. It's a lot of grass. Yeah, because we have a small tiller. We have a man's tiller, but I think you're going to need something bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah, I, but I don't know if the tiller could actually get like half of that is raised beds. Do you want to do, half of it is do you want to keep the beds? Um, I would, I would not be opposed to taking the wood out because it's pretty much rotten anyway, but, yep. um, you know, um, if I take it, if I take them out, I could just rototill the whole thing, and you know, yeah. You know, but you know, it's, it's. I actually dug out one of the beds the other day, and it took me three and a half hours to do one bed by myself, turning it over and getting the clumps out. So, well, maybe we can have a collective <laughs> dig out group of helpful friends on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who has projects like that, like, you know, most of what happens, people show up and are just like, what should I do? And things like that would be great if you want to have us help you. Yeah, that yeah you, you, can also, you can also put out to the whole community that you like help and that people can earn community service credits that way. Well, that's that's nice. That is nice. Um, yeah, so I'm putting it out there. If you guys want to help me turn it over, I, feel, I, I could try the mantis and, you know, it, just go slow and steady. I could try that. Um, well, yeah. Jane, would you like me to put out something to the community and with your email? Um, sure. Yeah, you can do that. Thanks, Margie. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and then, Jane, um, Jane, Eric? I would. Oh. I'm sorry. I I would. If you want to till the whole thing and those are rotting out, yeah, that's that's probably a good idea to just get it all out. I just bought. Right. I just bought a big steel, like real pry bar, like it's five oh. foot one. So it's not, yeah, I mean, I'll it try to remember to bring that up because that'll okay. be that that'll get down in the dirt, and you know we just do. All we need is what lever fulcrum, and we can pull that stuff out pretty easy. The 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 one the two by fours or whatever they are. Yeah, we'll just put they're, that. They're, five, they're, they're pretty bad. Like, <laughs> they're just falling apart. Okay, good. Then that shouldn't. It really probably shouldn't take very long. We'll we'll, we'll go old school Egyptian on it. Okay. Yeah. This way, that plot would be easy to rototill, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, hey, Eric. Yeah, I was gonna um, ask tell uh, anybody uh, when they come to the work meeting on Saturday if they have cardboard or newspaper, uh, bring it because we don't have much stocked up now, and we'll use it a bunch of it right away. Um, and Mark just commented in the chat that there's some available in the East Hampton Community Center. So if anybody has a chance to go pick some up and drop it off in the shed at some point, either on the work day or any time after that, it's it's great. We can always use more cardboard. They have, a, they have a whole dumpster full, Eric, and everybody. Uh, so you just can go help yourself. Uh, usually the best yeah. days to pick up are Monday or Thursday. But, you know, go ahead any day. Tomorrow will probably work. Awesome. Great. Well, operations, anything else? I don't have much else. I have more light, that's for sure. That's good. Uh, I have a cat on my shoulder, so there's that. And... Um, so next is outreach. Uh, we'll start with Margie. Hi, I'm just taking some notes here. Um, so we're pretty, we're almost filled up. We have, I think A11 and D9 are open. And if I'm going to email Julia and see if she's still interested. Um, so I, I'm not clear is, if Stephen is still here. I'm not clear, Stephen, if we have all these open plots. If you want to keep your plot, and we would offer Julia one of the other open plots. Or if you want to include your plot in what we can offer Julia, if, assuming she's still interested. Are you here, Stephen? 
I am here. Um, no, my intent, uh, I appreciate that. It seems like we have maybe more plots than we have folks. Um, but, yes. Uh, but for the time being, um, if someone shows my let me get going on it, and we'll see where we are as we keep on uh, going on. Cause like I said, I was, I was just going to cover it. I'm not going to plant anything. Okay, so maybe we should offer, if Julia's still interested, we should offer her D9 and A11 because at least, Stephen, your plot will be overseen in some way. It won't just be open and abandoned. Um, Sounds good. I'll make sure if she gets back to me that I show her those two for, um, for sure. And I, yeah. I, maybe um, you have all no noticed that I sent um i exported the contact list i have on google to and everyone else has it and it's possible for you to import it into your google contacts you'd be doing me a great favor because that way anytime a committee person has something to tell the whole community you can do it according to this contact list. I'm a little bit overwhelmed now. My daughter is ill. Um, she has a kind of a serious condition and I'm trying to help her as much as I can. And um, it's just it's just taking time and I have other family issues going on. So if, if anyone has questions or can't um, deal with the contact list, just let me know and I'll work with you on it. Oh, that's a cute kitten, Sarah. <laughs> she really, really wants to be involved. I apologize. Um, I, I don't have too much else to say. I assume we're leaving jumping worms for the end because it's yes, a yes. it's a real concern. Yes. Oh, but but as for me, I just want to also let you all know I put some a uh, couple of articles I found online which are really good about the jumping worms. I left them in a green folder near the seeds in the shed. And I've been living with these things for several years. So they're in my backyard and they were in the Northampton garden. And they have some effect and I'll talk more about it if, if everybody wants to afterward. But just so you know, there's that literature there. Please don't remove it. You can read it while you're there so everyone um, has a chance to read it. I think it's pretty helpful. It's one of the two of the best articles I've seen so far. Um, but I don't really have anything else. It's winding down a little since the season has started. But still, you know, if you need help contacting the community, feel free to reach out to me. Fabulous. Thanks, Margie. Um, Eric, do you have anything? I made a flyer. That's it. it. Oh, and it's awesome. And we can use it now. <laughs> it was what it was. It's very good. Very, very talented. Um, and then Eric, you want, you can also talk about path stuff. I don't know if you have any ambitions for Saturday or any, well, because you're not going to be here. So, but if you need us to do Saturday. anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I did check out the garden. Um, last week and it's it still looks pretty good i think it'll be saved until later in the summer um when they need to be redone uh i'll just worry about it then uh the only kind of one that was swervy is the one that is between but b2 and b3 um the, the thistle plot you know uh that could use some better definition uh and also the thistles always need to be kept down so first point of uh, pathing. I'd probably roll down a thing of the contractor or cardboard if we have some. Just do another layer of cardboard and uh, wood chips and just like build that up and kind of define it as a path, even though the rest of the plot next to it is completely wood chips. Um, I don't know. Just make sure that the wood chips have, uh, that the thistles have to work a little harder to grow in that little corridor. That makes sense. I'm going to write that down. Awesome. awesome. All right. Anything else, um, Eric? 
Great. Awesome. Thank you. So donation garden, I'm going to send an email after this. We're trying something new this year um, where because um, the donation gardens and hard to get sustainable involvement, we're going to do grow bags um, instead. And we'll have them, you can either put them in your plot if you volunteer to manage one, or um, we'll have them on top of the thistle plots, um, like the completely wood chipped um, plots. Um, it's, I under, if you don't want it to be in your plot, it takes a lot of real estate. So that makes sense, but we'll cover the cost of everything that goes into them. Um, it's just that you need to donate your labor and Stephen will be accountable for bringing the donations to the community center. So um, I'll send an email and get people to sign up and then we'll budget how many grow bags we can manage. And maybe some people have to share a grow bag um, depending on how it shakes out uh, like that. Uh, any, any questions? Great. I have a question. I have a, I have a question. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, this has to do with the compost. We, I, I need to get some sense of how much compost you're going to need for the grow bags because we have two people on the wait list right now for compost, and I told them okay. that it would depend on what the need was for the uh, donation garden or the pollinator garden. So it would be good to know that soon, so I can tell the yeah. folks w when the compost arrives before you know. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if we have two yards left after everybody's orders are currently filled, but these other two other parties would like would like some as well. Oh the, and yards is uh, one yard converts to four what four quarter yards, which is eight buckets per Per quarter yard. A quarter yard, yeah. Quarter yard, eight to nine buckets. I think we decided um, to go with eight. And we have 10 total donated from Eric. I think it was six. Just, yeah. Okay, six. And Eric, you had said, I believe that each of those grow bags would need a half yard of fill. It would not be all compost, but. Yeah, well, here, just well, before, here. I, I already did all the math on this. I was just calculating it. So if we filled all six bags, we would need um, a little over uh, a quarter yard of compost. Per bag. So no, total, because you don't, it's it's a small percentage of compost in each bag. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. I, I it's mostly aware. topsoil and then the, the peat moss. And I don't know, Eric, you might have a better recipe. This is just a few that I found. So maybe it would be safe to allot the grow bags a half a yard to be safe. I, I don't have a perfect recipe, but I did put some notes into the chat. I, if you do okay, add peat great. moss, don't put it to the top because then the soil becomes hydrophobic. So you want it either to be oh. thoroughly mixed in or buried underneath. Great. Also, I, I just saw a video on building beds and this person recommended putting like yard logs and brush, but only dead stuff, no like grass clippings or green leaves, um, filling it up like this much on the bottom because it eventually breaks down and the, the earth will sink a little, but and initially, it takes up some space, so you don't have to put so much fill in. Yeah, like a I mini, just saw it yesterday. mini hugel culture, kind of. Which, again, for oh, yeah, some folks that. with the soil stuff, a couple, Amy and I did a hugel culture in their garden beds. If anyone needs advice from them, that's a great way to tackle some of the clay um, soil. But, okay, so it so looks it like, looks uh, Mark, all you would need to allot right now for compost for this project is a half a yard and then okay. if if it turns out by next meeting we're not going to use that much we can offer it to someone else on the wait list they'll still well, hopefully be able to use it well here's here's what i'm going to propose um, we'll put aside a half yard for donation and a half half yard for pollinator we'll have one yard left and i can split that between the two people who are on the wait list and i think they'll Amazing. be 
and then we can get this out of the way. <laughs> and I'm just going to note that down for Karen. It's a, a whole half yard for her too. Yeah, for her. Okay, perfect. Her bed. All right. Um, so I'll send that email out, and I'm going to make sure I wrote down about the logs, but I'm going to write down this um, information Eric wrote as well. And that's it for donations. So um, pollinator. Karen is not here, but I have a feeling. She, I don't remember if she's coming on Saturday or not. Um, but she usually needs a lot of help with like random um, projects for that, maybe starting some seeds. And um, since Ted's not going to be here, I don't think they're going to work on constructing any more beds on Saturday. Um, is that right, Ted? I I don't know. Uh, okay. I haven't heard from Karen as to, you know, whether she wanted to try to put that some of that stuff together herself or with some other. Okay, people. great. So we won't worry about that for Saturday. <clears throat> but um, uh, anyone interested in helping with the pollinator garden, please email Karen. She's super great, and there's still like it's one of her bigger projects still. So there's a lot of little things to be done. Norman is usually first on the list for helping with the pollinator garden, but always use more hands um and next have the volunteer hours report deb sent an email so everyone oh my gosh i'm totally blanking how many hours of community service do we does everyone need to do four 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 thank you guys that was a quiz of the test and everyone passed <laughs> Um, so everyone needs to complete four hours of community service hours, and that comes in many forms of just helping different people out, mowing. Um, you listed on your applications about the crews, and I'm gonna, Deb is our coordinator for that, and I'll see it, it, she usually goes through all the applications to kind of organize what you signed up as being interested in. Um, but the major thing is to log your hours, and Deb has a little, Google Doc for that, that I'll send the link to. And just every time you do some work, just put it in there. And then she'll pester you throughout the, at the end of the season to say, hey, you haven't done it yet, you gotta do it, or we will. And um, if you have trouble using the spreadsheet, just reach out to me and I'll log your hours for you. Um, we have plenty of people do that. Um, all these technologies are bizarre, so definitely, um, Look out for that email for how to log your hours. Margie, uh, do you have copies of the applications to give to Deb? Or do I need to do that? I, I gave them to her last year. Of the garden ap application? Yeah, so that she the could see who's, who's volunteering to do what. Um. Yeah, I have them electronically. You Okay. Yeah, I can send that to Deb. Yeah, because she, she needed them last year so she could figure out, you know, what people might be assigned to or. Well, you would be a I don't know what happened. All right, perfect. All right, any other questions about that? Great, um, Gardner feedback, any other random things folks have it that aren't in the uh, upcoming business um, that or comments any anything you want to say okay great um so, so we a, already oh, i have oh yeah mark sarah is there a new business coming up or or not um i just had one item that i i, I wanted to report in the uh oh in my report earlier but i i didn't get a chance well, what, uh, let me add a new business as a little, uh, that, and we'll come back to it. What is it? Sure. What's the teaser? Oh, oh just about the use of the uh, training on the trimmers, use of the trimmers. Oh, okay. Awesome. Love that. Okay, great. So for old business, the garden mapping, we kind of went over earlier. Um, so we'll, you know, don't move the flags and folks are finishing up putting in some more firmer markings there, but ask questions if you're confused about your plot borders, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna push the room in the budget for a website again, just because it's not an urgent conversation. I'm also going to, does anyone feel um, like they wanna discuss the 
updating the dog policy or the banned plants right now? Updating what, Sarah? Um, we needed to update the guidelines regarding the dog policy. Oh, it might be a larger policy. discussion that I can push to next meeting. Um, unless somebody is has anything they want to say right now. I just think if dogs are um, either very well behaved so they don't go running through people's plots and no dog poops in the garden or they're on leashes, I don't mind dogs in the garden. I don't know if anybody else objects. I don't. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to um, motion then to, I'm just going to add to the guidelines that dogs are allowed as long as they are on a leash or and you pick up their um stool <laughs> their waist. and their waist thank you um and i'm just going to add that to the hi. guidelines so i move to do that as anyone Hello? second me oh hi yeah sorry sorry um this is leah i just wanted oh, to yeah. say um i just wanted to put in another perspective i prefer the dogs are not in the garden um like maybe maybe in the the grassy area above um but not in the garden itself because they're you know they can be unpredictable um and i would prefer that dogs are not you know like urinating even um next to things that we're eating oh i agree with that makes sense all right and then julie was next yeah, I kind of would like to second that. I mean, I know I'm I'm new this year and I love dogs for all of you who have dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of do think it would be better not to have dogs around in the garden or around the garden. And I know it's hard if you want to bring your dog with you, how to work that because there are those nice fields. But I agree with, you know, even peeing and pooping and then picking up the poop like i don't think it's so great to have that happening right where we're gardening so i i don't know i mean your first question was should this be tabled it might be that this is one of those things that's a bigger discussion also. yeah i think i'm glad to hear people have um that there is fodder for discussion so this is good um frank uh yeah i've and i've i i kind of am agreeing with that and i've had my dog up there my I mean, my dog was raised chasing away rabbits and killing voles up there she's a she's a feist she's in the terrier family but i i just i i i just kind of think it's i mean people like to take their dogs everywhere but i i think in just thinking of the diversity of people the number of people there there's people that have issues with dogs um i think in some respect it's probably at the very least i don't want to approve it i think i would rather have a further discussion about this for sure perfect yeah awesome but if we and don't have dogs up there, then it's on everybody to chase the rabbits away because <laughs> they are up there and they will eat your stuff if you don't chase them away. Yeah, even if you think they're cute, they're the ones that our area, they're not cute. They're mean. And they, they, they have them. they have eaten a lot of my produce. I'm right by the meadow there. <clears throat> and this year you, my garden there down there looks like a construction area because my son is helping me put up a nice new fence because I'm sick of <laughs> dealing with critters eating everything. I love it. Um, Julie. Sorry, I was trying to unraise my hand. Raise my hand. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Is it, am I unraised now? <laughs> yes, yeah. Sorry. Uh, awesome. No, that's great. Um, well, that's th this is all awesome. I might draft maybe like a couple different uh, ways to change the guidelines and then we can um, talk about uh, the specific way it's written out next meeting. Um, um, but thank you guys. I'm so glad we talked about that. Um, and I would like to table the grasses discussion as well until next meeting, um, just so we can get to opening work day. Um, 
And I'm going to skip uh, combos updates. No updates yet for my friend about that, but we are going to. We are working on getting a plan for the compost piles um, going. Great. So the opening workday, um, I have written down so far for tasks that we want to connect the hoses, maybe work on B2, B3 path, and um, that folks should bring seeds and plants that they want to donate to their fellow gardeners. Um, anything else? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get up there to, to mark these. And I don't know if we'll get this done Saturday, but there are some multi-floor rose plants that are starting to pop up um, within the garden area. As a matter of fact, I believe uh, A11 may have one. And there's some on the borders. These, these things are incredibly invasive. And we want to get them out and they they have thorns they're <laughs> they're evil so but they'll they'll start spreading quite a bit and so what what are they called frank uh the multi-floor rose multi-floor rose yeah, yeah for f-l-o-r i believe so they're on the border where the abandoned orchard is um and there's some growing even on the the edges of where we mow and so i i would really i'll i'll, I'll try it. i'll get some cloth or something and, and mark where they are if we don't get to them saturday it's something we could do for maybe a work project you know sometime in the summer but we really need to get them out of there uh, because they they'll they'll keep spreading i think that some of those were up in the um Raised beds by the parking lot too, so, and they are annoying. So uh, I believe you're correct. Yeah, you are. You're right, Sarah. <laughs> Something was prickly. <laughs> was yes, <up> they are <laughs> unforgiving. Sarah, if if yes. you're going to work on the path uh, B two B three, I'll I'll try to get up there tomorrow to see if I can at least measure those and put the stakes in so that we can clearly that would be great. Uh, clearly see exactly where that path has got to go awesome i'm biased it's my plot so <laughs> i'd love to know the, the lines of it um but no pressure just let me know if you don't get up there that's totally fine um thank you eric for posting the article in the little chat about multiflora rose oh great great yeah, actually, in the state of Virginia, you're required by law to remove them from your property. <laughs> That's how basic they are. Um, anything else for the workday? Great. Well, I, it sounds oh, like the workday is uh, going to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On, uh, yeah, this is my new business. Uh, can, can Jonathan or someone do a, a quick training on the use of the trimmer? It's always been an issue. We have a lot of extra grass right at the borders of things, and nobody seems to know how to use the trimmers. So I think we need to kind of reacquaint ourselves with how that's done since we have those two trimmers. And uh, I think Frank said they've been serviced. So they're serviced and ready to go. Yeah. What do you say, John? To John? I'm happy to share anything I may know. Yep. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, what time just, do you? Yeah, what time might so one thing I just want to note is we he looked at the first email that said it was the fifth and then never looked again. So we're actually hosting a large group of people uh, for the weekend um, for Saturday. So we will be there from maybe like nine till noon. So perfect. as long as it can happen yeah. in between that time, that's perfect. Absolutely. That'll be fine. And anybody who's around who wants to know, because a lot of people have little bits of including myself have little bits of grass that keep coming up and and we're all invited to the for. party after. yeah come on over you can stop the work day around noon around one we'll grill up some food wow oh my gosh <laughs> frank we're we're going to have to trim around those new stakes because we haven't had stakes in before okay. that's true it's so that's a perfect time to we're learn. We're going to have to use the trimmer around them. Perfect. Yeah, I think the more of us that learn, the better. I think it's really a good thing. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do like a hard 10, let's say 10 o'clock for the first round of um, trimmer usage. And then if it turns out 
some people show up a little bit um, before, you know, maybe closer to 11, we can do it again, but I'm going to, I'll add to the email 10 o'clock for, yeah, for, for, for as long as John can be there, as long as he can be there, yeah. we don't want to inhibit their plans. Yeah, you no, guys no don't, you don't need to stay until, you know, any later than you. Guys, there's no way any of my friends are making it over to two hours from Boston before noon, so don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to say last year when we were doing the closeout and putting all the tools and hoses away, I have these things called um, stud grabbers, which you can just clip to the studs. I put a bunch of them on to hold a few other tools or hoses. Frank, I didn't really get your blessing for that when we we're closing up, but they're very easy to unclip if anybody feels like they're in the way. Just tried to oh, take. Oh, it was wonderful oh. that you did that. <laughs> anything that helps organize anything in the tool shed is a welcome. <laughs> you, got, you got it. We're grateful. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Um, I guess I do want to make sure we have people there all day who are on the committee just to help guide. And if people have questions or just like say, oh, we're done all the projects, like, let me help you with your plot, etc. I can only be there from nine until 11. Um, or maybe noon, but I'm, I'm trying to set a boundary. <laughs> and so 11 is what I'm thinking. Um, I can also get there a little early um, around 8.30 if for any reason that would be helpful. Uh, other folks, what times were you planning to be there? Is it just Mark? Or Mark I can be there around 12, 12.30 to 3. Okay, oh, awesome. perfect. I yeah. you were um, going to 3. Chef, Margie. Sorry, Mark? What? You can be the, you're the afternoon chef. That's great. Yeah. But only till Thank three, you. not till four, because no, your email fine. said four. That's Sarah. Fine. Yeah, I'll, my I'll be God. there. I'll be I had my there. eyes closed during that email. Sorry. <laughs> what was that, Frank? <laughs> I'll be there at nine. I'll be there in the morning. Okay, fabulous. And FYI nine is usually busier. FYI, last year when I got there, everyone was gone. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. It's, it's not a big afternoon day, but who knows? I mean, people should just go to hang out with Margie, nothing else. That's so. right. <laughs> it's my grandson's Parking. birthday, so um, we might have evening plans. One of my grandsons. Love it. Uh, cool. Taurus? Yeah. Taurus. Yep. Um, yeah, mine's Monday. Your birthday's on Monday? Mm-hmm. I have to give Happy a final birthday. exam at final exam at eight o'clock in the morning. Yay. And then search committee meeting on my birthday. Oh my gosh. Well maybe I'll try to I think the brewery built at four, so there you go. <laughs> this, I'll get a baguette with a candle in it for you. Okay. Hey, I'll take a baguette anytime, <laughs> man. Small Those baguettes are awesome. Um fabulous. <laughs> Is so is it my the, computer where people are freezing, or is that is everybody seeing that? Yeah, we're not freezing. freezing too. Well, I've been freezing yeah. regularly. Mark is frozen. <laughs> Sarah, you just came back. Oh, oh what? <laughs> oh no, there you go, like Mark. Margie, oh, you <laughs> Margie, uh, turn your screen off for a minute, and then see if that makes a difference. Turn yeah, turn your screen off? off on your end. No, I don't dare do that because I'm on this laptop and <laughs> because sometimes that's what that. it is. So just in, I know in Zoom sometimes if, if if you're having to connect, you know, even volume issues if you turn the screen off, things improve. Mine mine said freezing due to the network. Yeah, it's well, it's largely an issue with the monopoly spectrum has on East Hampton, but um they do. Ooh, spectrum. it's okay. They suck. <laughs> Um, so we've got to convince the city to get Zoom. <laughs> yeah, we we can get I back would to, to it. But, <laughs> we can work it. on a petition. Um, but but now Zoom feeds all of your meetings into AI. <laughs> Don't know if you knew that. Whoa! Well, I, I, I didn't things. know that. I wouldn't be surprised well, if Google does as well. Um, the transcriptions, anyways, because Google was. I just listened to a podcast about. Um, about Google doing something like this. Anyways, so we do need to get back on track. Margie? 
we really need to talk about these jumping worms because yes, um, that's next. Christine found some under more wood chips in other places, and I've been seeing them everywhere where there's wood chips. And mostly what I'm seeing this time of year is little tiny babies. And you can tell that they're the jumping worms. Some of them are still very sluggish, but if you like wiggle them around or something, they start getting crazy. And the band that's around them is closer to one side of their body rather than with a, a regular earthworm where the band is in the middle. And, you know, I've been living with these for a few years now and some people are really freaking out about it, but the, the, thing, the thing about them is they really deplete the soil and it can be really hard to get seeds to grow. Um, and it's recommended that the article that I read and some of the other articles that if you plant seedlings, you might be more successful. And if you plant a little earlier, like when they're still babies, before June or July when they get really big and fat, that the planting might be more successful also. Um, in my, in my North Hampton garden, which I no longer have, I noticed that I could not get peas to grow. And that might be one reason, because it's just the past couple of years. Um, but if I put in seedlings, everything went, went fine. And there's some things that deter them. Um, you can put coffee grounds or black, tea, you know, use black tea leaves or use coffee grounds around your plant, and it seems to deter them. Um, there's cool. Good to know. Put clear plastic over your plot for a few weeks in at this time of year, and the, it will kill the eggs and the worms um, if it reaches 104 degrees Fahrenheit. They die off in winter, and they only go down like a little bit, a couple of inches into the soil, but the eggs don't die in winter. And, you know, I was really freaked out at first and I was pulling them out and, and killing them. And I'm sort of, and the article also states that we, we kind of get comfortable with living with them because they're really here to stay. They've been all over the country and someone in the other garden had said they've been in Massachusetts for 60 years, but they're just drawing attention maybe because areas forest floors are being really depleted and in my backyard which is a little forest next to the bike path there used to be a barrier of weeds between my garden and the bike path and there's like almost no weeds there anymore and there's a lot of these things so we just have to keep amending the soil and the problem is the damage that they do mostly that they eat up all the nutrients is that yeah that's what? basically it i also read something that said somebody's i forgot what kind of a plant but it had a good size root ball and the plant started to die and when they dug it up there were all these um jumping worms all tangled up in the root ball so they can eventually do some damage to certain plants also um like um, Christine also sent, I think she sent Sarah, you and I an email about, what is it, bit, bitterroot or what was it? Bittersweet. 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 Yeah, I guess my, my concern right now is it seems like the folks who very sweetly deliver us the, the free wood chips seem to drop off a bunch of wood chips with bittersweet root growing in it and jumping worms. Hmm. And I, I just am wondering if we should use that pile or if we should talk to one of the farmers and ask them to push that pile off to the side and see if we can get more or is but it like something a, we're ready to have people start around? The thing is though, that um, unless the mulch is pre-treated to 104 degrees, all wood from all trees, from all forests, 
might have okay. jumping rooms. There's a huge risk. So it's, and it's already there where it's already in the garden in several places. It is going to spread if we, it's like seemingly impossible to get rid of them completely. Um, okay. Um, oh, sorry, Eric. Is it possible to heat treat the wood chips by putting some clear plastic over that? I was wondering or that. Or is that dangerous that it might spontaneously come out? I don't think it's on. I think it's too fat. Yeah, I was like, it's we would have big. to spread it's it thin big. and then do that. Well, that would yeah. be one way to get rid of the wood chips. <laughs> or <laughs> start a fire. <laughs> or we could. I was wondering if when we if we use wood chips for the paths, we then immediately cover the path in plastic for a few weeks to try to kill off any eggs. Um, <laughs> does anyone? Ha what was that? Hey, Eric just sent me a message about the, the flamethrower weed killers. I want one of those so bad. Oh, yeah. The I dragon that yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, the city, and we there's a brush dump here in the city. There there are mountains of, of wood chips there, but these, these were all chipped in the winter from like probably trees in the, in the city or whatever. It's a lot of hardwood. Um, it, it's really clean nice chips i mean i i i i have a sticker to go up there but probably to take chips out of there they they probably wouldn't care and i guess and, I my mean, major you know, concern really right now before the work day is yeah is dealing with the what we have the current wood chips yeah because i think we can definitely work on trying to get more just should i advise people not to use those right now Oof. They're all over the place already. I don't know if it even makes a difference I, anymore. I, I agree with Margie. I mean, it may not be that, you know. Okay. It might not. It, yeah. Unless, was, unless we make a concerted effort to kill them all, and it seems like it's impossible. There's this, There's a In this article that I left there, there were studies done in Minnesota, and it's very interesting because they report what worked what worked a little bit what didn't work very well but nothing was a hundred percent nothing these I mean, things are like they don't seem to be killable we have to we kind of have to learn to live with them and it just means you yeah. have to keep when you find them take them out and um i and don't break I, them I, well what they what happens is they if you touch them they release the other end of their body. So you have to get them really carefully because they just like separate. They have, and they're also, um, they don't need a mate to reproduce either. They can just do everything on their own. Um, so you, I mean, when you're working the soil and you see them, if, especially if you take out the babies, anything you take out helps keep the population down. And if they're under the wood chips, that's a lot to feed them. So I'm hoping they won't go very far if they're if they're under those wood chips and they're feeding on all the good stuff that the wood chips break down into. Um, that's a good idea. That's a thought. Yeah, but, just but be sure you know how to identify them because there's there's red wrigglers and other worms up to, at the garden as well. So. Well, it's this is this telltale band. I yeah. forget if it's lighter or darker on the on it, the it's jumping lighter. worms. Yeah, it's lighter. And it's near it's closer to one end of their body. And it also goes completely around the body, where I think on the earthworm it doesn't go all around. I forgot what it's called. It starts oh. with a C. A sebum or something like that. All right. So for now though, I'm going to just let people use those wood chips and you left the great information booklets in the shed and we'll just tackle it kind of in this, um, you know, having to get used to a new real problem, just like the rain or anything else. Uh, so oh, we'll, and, and part of this is good, you know, we'll right. emphasize why we need to get compost operating at our own garden and, it's great that we already get compost brought in. We'll keep amending our soil accordingly. 
Um, awesome. Uh, any last comments on that? I got this isn't it with worms. Just when you all are up there, just check yourself for ticks because I got ticks on me in March during the spring break. So that's why my hair is cut short now. Um, but yeah, if you're up there, just be sure to check for ticks because there's both dog ticks and really tiny deer ticks right now. So true. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Awesome, Frank. Thank you. Um, great. So the our next meeting is June sixth. Um, is that actually now? I want to triple check if that's right. Yes, June sixth. Um, and um, does anyone have any final comments before I uh, close off the meeting for today? Great. Awesome. Good great. Thank you guys. Good job, this was awesome. Sarah. Yeah, great job, everyone. This is a, such a fun turnout, and we had so many such good discussion. Um, so uh does anyone uh I'm gonna motion to end the meeting. Does anyone second that? Yes. Okay, uh, all in favor. Bye. Bye. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye everybody. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.